Hey guys, Scott Donchkowski here with another post-processing episode. Today, we're gonna take a look at how to process a sunset from Rodeo Beach. Now, we go to Rodeo Beach on our San Francisco Marin Headlands workshop, and most recently, um, during that class, we had a pretty legit sunset. So uh, I ran over to the water real quick to grab a few photos. Um, got my feet a little wet, which is typical. Um, anytime you're dealing with the surf, but I wanted to show you guys how to properly or I, properly is a bad word to use um, how I would uh, process these images. So, you know, we have something like this um, taken raw in camera. Here's just a couple extra examples here of the uh, three minutes um, that I spent shooting and that's what we're gonna end up with at the end, something like that. Um, every time you process, it's gonna look a little differently, but um, I'm going to show you the steps through Lightroom and Photoshop to get something like this. Um, and so I've gone ahead and just imported um, and kind of organized uh, the favorite photos from, you know, the, the five that I was able to take uh, quickly out there. And um, using the power of Lightroom, just trying to kind of give these guys a rating on which ones I want to use. Um, really, really probably happy with this one the most in terms of composition. Um, so this is the base image. This is kind of the one we're going to look at here. If we go back to the grid, you'll see that I've four starred this one. Um, this one's okay. Two stars for me, maybe three. Um, not very good here. You know, nice light, but just nothing happened in the foreground. And then this one's very similar. Um, to this one between these two. It's kind of a, a wash between which one's the best. Um, so this one for me kind of stands out um, among the rest. Uh, the problem that I have with this is if we zoom in here, you're gonna see this kind of weird uh, lighter area on this rock. It goes from dark to light pretty abruptly. And then there's a water spot here and 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 it just keeps going. Um, the problem with this particular file is those things. Uh, I can't really get rid of that stuff easily, um, or at least I don't want to really want to show you guys how to Photoshop out this directly. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this image, which was shot prior to me shooting this one. Um, and if we take a look at this one, you'll see that we don't really have that problem with the light you know, cutting across this rock, and then I don't really have the problem with the kind of water spots um, on this rock right here. So we're gonna kind of cheat, and we're gonna take the elements of this particular photo, obviously these rocks here, and we're gonna put them into this image where the rocks aren't as pleasurable as I'd like them to be. Now, there's a varying reasons why these things show up um, or why they might show up on your camera. Um, most importantly, when you're out shooting in the ocean, you really need to clean your lens constantly, constantly, um, because of the sea spray. Uh, I have kind of a unique problem with mine. Um, my lens is uh, slightly damaged. So when I shoot into the sun, I gotta be really careful um, about you know, how I shoot into the sun. I was also using a filter. Filter is a little scratched as well. So kind of a myriad of reasons why they're showing up uh, on my picture here. So kind of the trio of bad news, you know, filter scratched, lens scratched, pointing into the sun and actually quadruple um, and water spots. Any one of those things is probably why this happened. But for some reason here, um, they don't show up as much. So again, we're going to use this image to steal the rocks from, and we're going to use this image as kind of a base image. You can see the composition's all pretty much set. It's really, really nice. So without further ado, um, let's just take this one over to the develop module and start processing. <clears throat> so the way I like to work in Lightroom is um, typically from big to small. Big to me, meaning what is the one thing in the image that's bothering you the most. That could be something, you know, like if it was crooked like this and you wanna just straighten that first, whatever the biggest thing is in the image, fix that first because it's gonna bother you the entire time. Let's reset this. Um, and I mean, obviously Lightroom is organized in a way from, you know, top to bottom. So if you start at the top, you work your way down to the bottom, you're basically done. Um, you don't necessarily have to work in that way, but um, if you don't quite 
know how you like to process personally, uh, that's probably the best way you're going to achieve what you're looking for is to start at the top and work from the bottom. I don't typically work like that just because I've been doing it for a while. Um, so you kind of get the idea as we move along. All right. So first things first, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and I'm just going to hit my lens corrections right off the bat. Just remove chromatic aberration, enable profile corrections. Um, we're just going to get rid of that. <clears throat> um, sometimes I like to take the vignetting slider and just turn it down. You can see what that does. Um, so we're correcting for the distortion and the chromatic aberration, but we're not correcting for the vignetting. Sometimes the nice natural vignetting of the lens you have is, is cool to leave in the photo. Um, and I don't necessarily like to have hot corners um, on my landscape images. Sometimes when the corners are the same uh, intensity as the rest of the image, um, for me anyway, I kind of lose my place in the image. I tend to kind of wander around the corners, but if they're nice and a little darker, some natural vignetting, then I, I, I do tend to kind of wander through the image a little bit more and not wonder why the corners are so bright. So that's how I'm gonna leave it um, with the vignetting off. Then I'm gonna go back up to basic and I'm gonna start my processing. So first, what I like to do is just start with the tones. So I'll bring the highlights down. I'm gonna bring my shadows up slightly, right about there. If I go too high, you'll see we get a lot of nasties on the rock. So every time we come out and we shoot this place, I always tell people, don't bother trying to get detail on the rock. It's just not gonna happen. It doesn't need to be pitch black, right? But it also doesn't need to have detail. You're pointing into the sun. There's very little detail on the rock that you're gonna want anyway. So I'm gonna not put this at 100, I'm gonna put it at about maybe, let's say 50. <clears throat> just a little bit, that's all we need, okay? Then I'm gonna come down to my whites and blacks, and you know I like to use the whites and black sliders to find my white and my black point. So I'm gonna hold the Option or Alt key on a PC, and I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag my white sliders up. And you'll see that when we do this, we're going to get areas that are turning white in the image. So those areas are gonna be clipped, right? So I want just a little bit of those to shine through, just about like that. Looks like a nice normal sunset. And if we click our backslash key on the keyboard, before and after is what we get. So backslash, that's how the image came in. Backslash again, that's how it looks right now. Pretty good. All right, then I'm gonna take my blacks slider, and again, I'm gonna hold the Option or the Alt key on a PC, and I'm gonna drag down right about like there. So we get a little bit of clipping in the blacks as well. All right, looks pretty good. <clears throat> Let's give it a touch of clarity and see what that does. Mm, no, we're gonna leave that off. Let's see, vibrance, oh uh, no. Saturation, no. We're gonna leave that alone probably till the very, very end. Okay, this looks pretty good just with those small adjustments. I don't really think we need to go too much. I'm gonna bring the whites up a little bit more, right about like that. That looks pretty good. Zoom in here, take a look. Yeah, looks pretty good. And let's come down to, let's see here, effects. One thing I really like to add to the photos nowadays is using the dehaze um, in Lightroom. If we run a dehaze on this, you can see that we're gonna add contrast to the image, so maybe Maybe a little bit of that, let's say 15. Let's see what that looks like before and after. You see all these light switches here. We can turn off the adjustment, turn it back on again, off and on, just in this one little section, so that's kind of nice. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's check our reference image here just to be sure. Okay, we're, we're pretty close. I'm thinking we need to do something else here. Let's go back up to basic, and we're gonna warm it up just a tiny bit. Let's say 5,500. Let's try 5,700, there we go. And maybe some more magenta. Let's add plus 10 magenta. Ooh, there we go, that looks nice. So again, there's before and after, before and after. Nice dramatic um, magentas in there. And it's also coming off like in the water as well. So pretty cool. All right, now we can start to deal a little bit more with cleaning it up and just kind of finalizing this before we go into Photoshop. So. I'm gonna go to the detail panel here, and I'm not gonna sharpen it here in Lightroom, but I, what I do like in Lightroom is this color noise reduction. We're gonna put that up to 50. 
And just to show you before and after here, I don't know if we can see that. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Let's go two to one, yeah, two to one here. And if we turn this off, you can see that we have all this weird, nasty color stuff in here. Turn it on, it goes away. So it kind of desaturates um, some areas of the image so you don't get that color noise. Let's turn this all the way off and you see what I mean. So here we have all the color noise in here. If we go up to the darker area, see, ooh, look at that. That looks pretty bad. So putting this at 25 is pretty good. That's where usually it starts. That's a default, but we're going to kick it up to 50. I'm going to type in 50 here. All right, that looks pretty good. So now we're not, don't have any of that color noise anywhere. It looks pretty decent now. Again, we're not going to sharpen. Let's take a look really quickly at our horizon. So I'm going to grab, uh, I'm going to go back up to this tool right here, which is our crop tool. I'm going to grab the angle finder, and then I'm going to click on the horizon on one side, and then drag a line to the other side, and keep that line on the horizon in the image. And there we go. So it looks like I'm off by about 0.2 degrees. Let's try that again. There, there, 0.19, yeah. All right, cool, there we go. Now we're nice and level. All right, so I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out so far. Again, there's our before, there's our after, not too shabby. We're gonna deal with um, the saturation and all that good stuff like after we're done. We actually don't really need to do too much. I mean, we're presented with a pretty nice, um, Sunset here. Let's just zoom in here and double check our detail down here. Yeah, it's pretty good. A little dark, but maybe we'll address that at a later time. This all looks fabulous in here. Okay, and we'll take care of that little water spot. And we'll take care of whatever that is in Photoshop as well. Okay. So, next step is we're going to do the exact same thing to this image. So this image, um, remember we're going to steal the rocks from here and here, and we're going to put it over on the other image because they uh, don't have that light problem with them. So we're going to, again, we're going to actually bring this image up and I'm going to command or control click on the other one in our timeline here, our uh, film strip. Then I'm going to go to sync right down here and hit sync and that's going to give us all this stuff and I'm going to hit check all and hit synchronize. So I didn't do any local adjustments which is something that you probably want to do on each image individually. Um, local adjustments would be something like you know your spot removal or your filters like adjustment brush or grady graduated filter. You probably want to do that um, on each individual image. It gets really squirrely when you try to copy over local adjustments from one image to another, especially images that aren't um, uh, shot exactly the same way. So, you know, this is, you know, shot here and this one is shot here and they just look really different. Um, <clears throat> so everything is kind of off reference. So let's zoom in here and make sure that we have Again, a good reference rock, which we do. Everything looks pretty good. And we're gonna leave it at that. We're gonna go back to our grid here. So there's our two images. I'm gonna click on both of them here. You can command click on them like so, or you can shift click. Either way, you wanna get both of these selected. And I'm gonna right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. That's gonna take us to Photoshop. And that is gonna deposit the images one on top of the other <clears throat> as layers and we can click back and forth between the two and you can see that we have a problem because they're not aligned but we're going to take care of that in a second all right so let's make this full screen <clears throat> okay and i'm going to zoom in here and for those of you that have PCs or have Macs that have a mouse with a scroll wheel, oh my gosh, you really need to go to um, your preferences and um, tools. 
and you're gonna to wanna to turn on zoom with scroll wheel. If you don't have a mouse with a mechanical scroll wheel, uh, I don't recommend turning that on, but for me, having a mechanical mouse um, or a mechanical scroll wheel on a mouse, uh, it just makes it so much better because I can zoom in very easily and I can zoom out very easily. I don't have to use the keyboard to do that because it gets kind of funky with the keyboard. Okay, so there's our images. I'm gonna take our top image here and I'm gonna lower the opacity on this and well, first of all, let me show you what happens um, if I try to get Photoshop to auto align these. So let's do this. Let's go select both of these like so. You can command click on them to get them both selected and you can go up to edit auto align layers. And I'm just gonna have it do auto and hit okay. And let's see what happens here. All right. So we have a bit of a problem here. Photoshop does not really know how to align these layers and it's done a pretty horrible job as you can see so i'm going to go into my history and i'm going to undo that and we're going to have to align them manually which is kind of a pain in the ass so when you're out shooting uh try not to change your composition <laughs> there's the best lesson i can give you um because then you won't have to do what i'm about to do right now all right so i'm going to click on the first layer I'm gonna drop the opacity down, and then I'm gonna grab my move tool, and I'm just gonna scoot this layer on top of that one, and then I'm gonna try to get all those to line up. You can use the the um, arrow keys on your keyboard to help, and you can see that I've done a pretty good job here. That looks pretty close, right about there. All of these things kinda end up lining up. <clears throat> we don't really care about the edges too much. I only really care about this little section here. Actually, let's see. Yeah, we might want to warp this a little bit. So this is going to be a two-stage process. Um, turn this off and on here. Yeah, we probably want to warp it. All right. So I don't want to take the whole image and do that. Um, what I mean is I want to take just a small section of the image like this. This is the only thing I need to replace you know, on this image. There's this little section here, and then this section here. But if I take the whole image and try to warp the whole image to fit on here, it's gonna be kind of a pain in the butt. And I don't need to, I only need this little section and this little section. So we're gonna do two of these. So I'm gonna take this image here, the top one. Let's turn the opacity back up to 100 for the time being. And I'm gonna zoom in, and I'm gonna grab just my rectangular marquee tool and I'm just going to click and drag a selection just like that and then I'm going to right click in that selection and I'm going to say layer via copy there we go okay then I'm going to click on the reference layer again I'm going to zoom over I'm going to make another box around this one right click layer via copy and then we can turn off that particular layer and you can see we have the two C stacks um, but they're not aligned yet. So we'll turn this one off for the time being. We'll deal with the small one, okay? So there we go. It's pretty close, but it's not perfect. So we're gonna grab our opacity tool, go down about, let's see here. Let's move this out of the way so we can actually see it. Okay, pretty good. Just kind of get it close, close enough. And then I'm gonna go to File, sorry, Edit, Transform, warp. Now you can see that the warp tool is only working in that little section that I cut out. If I want to warp the entire image, then I'm going to have that all over like this. And it's going to be really hard to control um, on a large scale like this. So having it on a small scale means I can keep it zoomed in like this and makes it way easier to see where all the points are. So all I need to do is just kind of line this up. You can also try to change the blend mode here, like if I do difference, <clears throat> right? It's a lot easier to see where my edges are. Whoops. So again, it's just about trying to get all the edges in perfect harmony. There we go. There we go. 
I think that's pretty close. Let's check this bottom section here. That's pretty close. You don't really care too much about that one. Let's bring this in a little bit. We can bring this one out a little bit. And let's try this side. Pretty good. I think we're pretty close here. Let's turn this back to normal. Yeah, I don't really see anything that's bugging me. That looks pretty good. We're going to confirm it by just hitting a little check mark up there. And there we go. Now we have a perfectly aligned rock between the two images. So what we need to do now is mask this in. <clears throat> so I'm going to hold the Option or Alt key, and I'm gonna click on the layer mask icon down here. And that's gonna turn a layer mask, you can see, of all black, right? Remember in Photoshop, black conceals and white reveals. So Option click on that. And you can see that with the layer mask black, it's concealing this layer. Remember, this is, this is what's on that layer. So we wanna reveal it now. So I'm gonna click on my layer mask. I'm gonna to go to a brush tool right up here. You can hit B on the keyboard. Whoa, that's pretty big. Let's drop the brush size down. And we'll keep the opacity at about 50% and hardness at zero, that's good. And then all we have to do is paint in white. And you can see I can change the color over here by just flipping these two back and forth. We wanna change that to white and then all we need to do is just kind of brush this in. We'll zoom in a little more. And we'll just kind of brush, 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 brush. There we go. Okay. We'll change our color again, and we'll kind of come in on the edges here and just kind of make sure that we have, not have waves from one getting into the other. So we're just gonna kind of, there we go, oh, yeah. That looks nice. Now it looks nice and even. There we go, perfect. And then if we flip this, you can see exactly what we did. So we kind of just, remember that other picture is not immune from the weird light whatever, but we just kind of evened it out a little bit. And if I Option or Alt click on the mask, that's the mask that we just painted. So the white, again, is revealing what's on this particular layer. The black is concealing. So there we go, that's pretty dynamic. I think that looks excellent. And now we have to address the large one. Okay, so we'll turn this one on now <clears throat> and we'll drop the opacity down so we can see it. And then we'll go to Edit, Transform, Warp and we'll do the exact same thing to this one. Okay, Woo. let's escape out of that. And let's move this really quickly so we get kind of close to a starting point. There we go, that's about as close as we're gonna get all right, edit, transform, warp. Okay, so we just wanna grab all of these things and get them as close to the edge of the other image as possible. That's all we need to do. There we go, that's good. That's good, it's okay if you have to come back and kinda of rework it. That's the whole point of this, is to get it as perfect as you can. That looks pretty good. Wow, did we, are we done? Oh, a little bit more over here. Good. 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 All 
the edges look pretty good. Excellent. Okay, so we're gonna confirm that by hitting the enter key, or you can also hit that little uh, <clears throat> uh, checkbox that was up there as well. And now the only thing we have to do now is just kind of, again, blend this one in. So we'll do the exact same thing. We're gonna grab our um, adjustment, or sorry, our layer mask box right here. We're gonna hold the option or alt key and click. And then that's gonna make that turn black, you can see. Just turning on and off the layer mask here. Make it go black. So now we have the layer underneath, which is not the one we want. We're gonna grab our brush by hitting B, and we're gonna paint in white. So we got white over here. And then we're just going to just kind of fade these out. Goodbye. 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 Look at that. Almost all gone. Much better than the last. There we go. Okay, let's see if we can bring in, we'll turn the opacity up all the way now. And I'm just gonna try to, mm, nah, I don't really like any of that. We're gonna go back up here. We're gonna start again in the history and we'll paint with white and we're just gonna do this one more time and nope I messed up let's go back again turn the opacity to 50 percent and then we'll do it Pretty good, there we go. Let's see if we can get rid of that. Excellent, there. I'm gonna try not to come down into the water because the water in that photo was completely different. So we'll just try to keep it all there. Beautiful. Let's turn on this one. Hey, look at that, there we go. Pretty cool. I'm gonna option click on this layer here. And that solos this layer, so there's there's what we've created, there's what came before. So that's just the one layer. This one is with the two layers kind of combined. Pretty neat. I don't see anything else I need to be concerned with. I guess this is a little funky down here, so let's grab our black brush and just kind of, yeah, we'll just kind of get rid of all of that extraness that's coming through with there too, just in case. Make sure all of these lines kind of line up here. Nothing funky. Pretty good. All right. I'm pretty happy with that. Again, not completely immune. Still a little spot there, but that's quite all right. We'll deal with uh, a little bit of contrast in that area, maybe a little clarity, and it should be fine. Okay. There we go. <clears throat> All right, so now let's kind of zoom back in here and we'll deal with this a little bit. I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna destructively um, dodge it. Actually dodge is lighter, burn is darker. So we're gonna burn, we're gonna burn this in a little bit. Let's bring that up to 100. Is this doing anything? Mm. Yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah, that works. Let's see if we can do a little more. Let's go up to the curves palette here and just 
give it a touch of curve. So we're gonna drop a um, clipping mask on this so that it only affects that layer. There we go. Let's see the before and after. No, I don't really like that. And we're gonna turn that off. That's fine the way it is. Don't wanna overdo it. <clears throat> cool. All right, so now what I wanna do is I wanna work on the entire image um, independent of all the layers. So um, I wanna hit Shift, oops, Shift, Command, Option, and E. On a PC, that would be Shift, Control, Alt, E. And what that's gonna do is it's a little command called Stamp Visible. And that's gonna take all the layers you have here, it's gonna combine them, and it's gonna copy them, and it's gonna deposit them on the top here. So that's what this layer three is. This is all of this stuff together, okay? And then we're just gonna hide all this. So I'm gonna take all of this, and I'm gonna hit Command or Control G. And we're gonna put that in a group, and we'll just call this one, um, I'll just call this one workspace. All right. And we'll call this one final. All right. <clears throat> now we can kind of clean this up a little bit. So I'm going to zoom in here and we got a little water spot here. So I'm going to go to my spot healing brush, make sure it's set to content aware. Get it a little bigger here and just click once gone. And same thing here. We'll zoom in back here. I quite don't quite know what that is, but gone. <clears throat> Anything else that looks suspicious? Kind of zooming around the image. I don't really see anything else. That's oh, just stuff on the water. That's okay to keep. Kind of leave that the way it is. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so that covers that. Okay, now we go to the kind of special technique at the very end here, which is the, the Orton Glow. Um, I really like using, um, kind of adding some Orton Glow to my images a little subtly um, to kind of bend the light around objects, kind of make it, just make the lighter parts of the image glow just a little bit, uh, makes it have a little bit more ethereal look to it. So the way to do that, um, is obviously you can go look at the Orton Glow video, but we'll just do it really quickly here. So the, the basis of this is having two layers. So you have your final layer, which we'll just rename Sharp, and the layer up above, we're gonna name Blur, and whoops, we're gonna take our Sharp layer, and we're gonna go up to Filter, Sharpen, Smart Sharpen, and we're gonna bring this back over here, and I'm gonna do pretty heavily here. If we zoom in, you can see, there's the preview before and after. And we're gonna hit okay. <clears throat> so decently high radius um, of two and about 250 for the um, for the amount, um, and that's gonna really bring out all these edges, look at that. Um, the safe way to do this would be to make this a smart object first, and we can do that. Actually, let's do that. Let's just do this the right way. So, we'll put that off. We're gonna right click, convert to smart object. And um, then we'll do that with this one too, convert to smart object, because we are gonna blur this one too. And at least this way we'll save all of our work so that we can come back and we can edit this um, at a later time if we need to. All right, so we'll go to sharp, go back, and we're just gonna do this again. 250, 2.0, reduce noise at 20, that's pretty standard for me anyway, and we're gonna hit okay. And look at that, that's, that's pretty bomb. I'm pretty happy with that. And then for the blur layer, we're gonna zoom out here so we can actually see it. For the blur layer, we're gonna go filter, blur, and we're gonna do a Gaussian blur on this. And the Gaussian blur, we're gonna put at about 30. Let's do 35 today and hit okay. 
And now the point of this is to have the blurry sections um, blend with the lighter areas of the section underneath. So in order to do that, we do have to create a luminosity mask. And before you go running for the hills, remember that luminosity masks aren't um, the hardest thing in the world to create. And we only really want just a basic lights mask. And to do that, um, we're just gonna click on our sharp layer here. We're gonna go to channels, and I'm going to command or control click on RGB. And that gives us a basic lights one, if you wanna call it that. Um, luminosity mask. We can go back to layers. We're going to go to our blur layer, turn it back on, and then we'll click the layer mask icon and the stored selection, which is what this is, uh, gets automatically put into that layer mask automatically. Don't have to worry about it. All right. So we'll click back over here and you can see we have a nice blur, but that's not enough. The next step is to go to our blending modes and change this to soft light. And that means that we're done, at least with this part. So here's the before and after. So after, obviously, before. Look at that little tiny amount of blur coming out. There's another way to do this that I, I feel like I should show you. So I'm going to turn this off. And we'll call this one, I'll call this one blur one. Actually, I'll call it glow one, glow one, OK? <clears throat> Oop, let's open Photoshop again. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I had a little crash there. So there's our blur. Did we get the sharp done? Let's see, before it destroyed. Yeah, we got the sharpness. All right, so we don't have the smart layers, but that's okay. So let's take this and we're gonna continue like normal. So again, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. All right, and oop, gotta go turn that off. Channels, command, click, layers, turn that back on, layer mask, and then change this to soft light. Okay, so that's that step done. Let's again rename this Glow 1. Okay, we'll turn this off and I'll show you a different way to do this. So we'll take the sharp layer, we'll duplicate it. <clears throat> we'll go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And we'll turn that up to, yeah, 30 is fine. And then what we can do is I'm going to go to levels here and I'm going to crunch up my highlights and crunch down that middle section there just about like that. And then we'll make a clipping mask out of it. And then I'm going to take my sharp layer and I'm going to drop the opacity all the way down to about 20% or so. And we'll call this one glow two. There we go. So it's a little bit more intense, as you can see. We'll zoom in here, there's glow one. Actually, that's no glow. Glow number two. And then glow number one. I really like the way glow number one looks. Um, this could be a little lower, but I'm trying to show you guys on here that um, the effect. So we're gonna do glow one. <clears throat> Get rid of this one here, and we'll get rid of the levels adjustment. And there we go. That looks pretty good. And then all we need to do is just close this and hit save. Oh, okay. And oh, it's a recovered file. Okay, so this will be interesting. So we'll put this into the Rodeo Beach file here, and we'll hit save. <clears throat> Saving, saving, saving. So we're gonna just quickly process the end of this, or the tail end of this in Lightroom. Um, <clears throat> and probably could save some time by just removing this whole section here, but again, we'll keep it 
like this. Actually, let's just delete this and see what happens. We'll delete this, close this, and say yes to save. Should take a lot less time. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> All right, and then we go back to Lightroom. Yeah, since Photoshop crashed, it's not here, so we're gonna have to just import this really quick. And let's see, I want Rodeo Beach. There's the recovered PSD. And we're gonna hit import. All right, and there's our recovered file. <clears throat> Put this in the quick collection here. And the one thing that I want to do prior to just ending this is we'll go back into develop and we're just going to finalize this. Um, I'm going to crop it a little bit over here and a little bit over here. Something like that. We'll hit OK. That looks much better to my eye. And we'll give it a little touch of clarity. About 25 or so. See the before and after. Yeah, we get a little, rid of the little, little glow, so let's go a little less. Let's do about 15. Bring the shadows up just a, ooh, no, tiny, tiny, tiny bit. 15 or so. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Nice. And you can see that with the adjustments that we did, um, it's pretty saturated. We don't really need to add any vibrance, right? Or saturation, especially not saturation, because look at what's going to happen with the oranges and yellows. Um, we could do maybe five, mm, ten vibrance. Problem with doing too much is that your your uh, waves will start to turn blue which I guess is up to you what you want that to look like. We can also go to HSL, and we can do it in HSL. I could go to saturation here, and I could up the oranges a little bit in here, and that looks pretty good. Maybe up the yellows a little bit. No. Yeah, it doesn't really look that even. What about the reds? No, we don't really want to touch that either. It's pretty, they're pretty well, almost well clipped in here, so. I don't really want to go too far um, with that, so that we'll lose color information if we do that. Maybe, maybe what we could do is we'll use a graduated filter from the bottom up, and we'll see if we can see if we can increase the white balance here. Let's go 20 and maybe 10 for the tint, and just kind of drag this up like so. Go, no, oh, we'll go a little. Something like that. Yeah, this angle here, I think I like better. And maybe we'll increase the saturation down there. Like that. Ooh, yeah, there we go. Nice. Cool. Um, I like that a lot. Let's see here. There's our before and after our Lightroom adjustments at the very end here, and it's not too much. Uh, again, I'm trying to limit increasing the saturation so that we don't get, you know, extra blooming of color like up here. We don't really need that at all. Um, and let's go back up to basic here and let's just uh, drop the clarity. I don't really want that. What happens if we do negative 10? Nah, just zero is fine. <clears throat> so there we go. So there's our from Photoshop. That's what we did in Photoshop. There's reprocessing it a little bit in Lightroom. And that's it. Um, I would be done with this. Let's look at it full screen and just admire it in all its glory. It looks pretty good. Um, you don't really need to do anything else to this image. Um, I like it the way it is. I mean, if we zoom in here, we can see that there's still enough detail on here that it looks interesting, but it's not... Um, overly done pretty dark up here but that's part of that's because of the filter i was using it looks this still looks pretty natural to me <clears throat> everything else looks really good these rocks are nice and sharp lots of color coming out of there ah, it looks pretty good i i'm pretty happy with that i can be done with that uh, and there you go so editing 
our Rodeo Beach image and we took it, you know, from essentially that to that. Pretty nice. Let's see those side by side, shall we? <clears throat> Not bad. Okay. So, um, as always, thanks for watching, guys. Um, and please share. Uh, and uh, happy shooting. We'll see you out there.